Michelle Jalen is the nutrition artist, and we're here now in the daytime kitchen. Welcome to daytime. Thank Welcome you. Welcome back to daytime. Thank you. What are we talking about today, Michelle? Today we're talking about three healthy homemade holiday gifts that you can give that are also nutritious. Okay, I love it. Yeah. I love edible gifts. I know they're the I best, love right? edible hostess gifts because it's, you know, we all have so much stuff. Um, and so it's really nice to bring something that's homemade, that's healthy, that you can enjoy, and even serve during your party. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna start on this end right here. Sure. And here we have an oatmeal cookie in a jar. And this is a great gift because when you give it to this someone, it looks nice, but right. also it's all the ingredients, the dry ingredients that are used to make cookies are just in here. And all the person has to do is add the wet ingredients. And I also find too, this is a great way to get kids in the kitchen because mm -hmm. it's like kind of made from scratch and you know, it's a pretty simple recipe and it's a great way to get them to learn about cooking. And I believe cooking is a life skill, so. And healthy cookies, I'm good with healthy cookies. Yeah. So what makes these cookies healthy other than the oatmeal? Or okay. is it the oatmeal? Yeah, there <laughs> is oatmeal. Yeah, no, there's, there's oatmeal. So also what I've done here is I've added wheat germ and I've added whole Ooh. grain flour with, uh, with all purpose flour. And what that does is actually make it a whole grain cookie. Okay. Yeah, so then, and when you, when you add the wet ingredients, there's only four, right? And the recipe is actually just in the card right there. And all they'll need is an egg, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, two tablespoons of butter, and the secret ingredient is actually low-fat vanilla yogurt, oh, okay. instead of, so you can cut back on fat on the right. recipe. So okay. once they make it all together, then you get this nice cookie right here, and um, it's a great gift, and it looks pretty, and you can give it to people who love cookies and food. And food, I love it, I love foodie gifts, okay. Almonds. Almonds. So almonds are one of my favorite nuts in the world. They are super healthy. They're high in monounsaturated fat, which is heart healthy fat. And they're also high in fiber and protein, which makes you feel full longer mm -hmm. and it keeps you full until your next meal. Right. So you can snack on plain almonds. You know, that's a great way to snack on them. But why not add a little kick to them and make it a little more fun for the holidays? Agreed. So what do we do to them? So here we have a sweet and spicy almond recipe and all you do is in a saute pan you're going to add your honey you're going to add four spices two teaspoons each of cumin cayenne pepper smoked paprika and cinnamon oh yeah so it's going to be a little bit of a smoky fiery kick to that absolutely so you said cumin cayenne cinnamon and paprika yes okay yes perfect you got it <laughs> i got it with one <laughs> tablespoon of salt and three tablespoons of sesame seeds. And of course, you can actually find all the recipes on my website. Perfect, which is nutritionartist.com. There you go. <laughs> nutritionartist.com, okay. And then you're going to mix it with honey. You're gonna put it on the pan, put it in the oven for about 15, 20 minutes at 350, and then you get this really nice spiced McNuts. All right, warning to the audio people, it's gonna crunch. Mm. Oh, salty and sweet. Yes, and a little and spicy. spicy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those need a little warning sticker. Yeah, so you can, so you know, <laughs> normally you get like cookies in a tin, right? Mm -hmm. So instead you can have um, nuts in a tin and it's a great uh, recipe that you can give or you can, you can package it up in a little bag here and you can give them away as gifts. These are really good. And so how far in advance can you make something like this? Can you make it a couple weeks in advance or does it need to be kind of done really quickly? That's a great question. So they last about two weeks in an airtight container. Okay. So you can have, you have time. You have time. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I love those. Those are great. Yeah. Okay. Two of my favorite things, beet and kale, but I've never had them together. Yes, so here today I made beet and kale chips. Mm -hmm. And so you got the green from the kale and you got the red from the beets and then you got the nice Christmas colors together. <laughs> so all you do, it's very simple to make, is that you would slice your beets up very thinly or you can use a mandolin mm -hmm. as well. And then you're gonna tear up the kale leaves and then toss it in some olive oil and some salt and pepper. And here I used rosemary. I find rosemary goes really well with it. And it's Christmas. It's the right. Christmas spice. Right. May I? Yeah, of course. So how oft, how long do you cook your kale chips? Because I see so many different recipes. Um, do you do them long and slow, quick and high? What's your recipe for kale chips? So my recipe is about uh, 300 in the oven mm -hmm. and then for about 15 to 20 minutes mm -hmm. but what you want to do is you want to watch them around the 15 minute mark because you want them to dry out but you don't want them to burn right and they do they have that savory almost like a turkey stuffing it's that rosemary yeah. in there okay and the beets um do you peel the beet first so 
Beets actually, you can actually eat the skin of beets. Really? So as long as you scrub them, so you're gonna scrub, you're gonna wear gloves, okay? Because yeah. otherwise your hands are gonna turn super red. So you're gonna scrub them and then after you cut off the stems, and then you could just put them through the mandolin or slice them with a knife and then they're good to go. Okay, and so you're baking them at the same time as the kale? Yeah, but at the same time, I find sometimes the beets need a little bit of extra time. So a great thing to do is to put uh, some of the beets on a different baking sheet and the kale on another one. And that way you can kind of like monitor it easily and just check to see, you know, which one is ready to come out first. Mm -hmm. I'm just holding it up so the camera can get a really cool shot of that beet in the light. Nice and red. And uh, here's another interesting tidbit is a lot of times uh, you have um, potato chips at your party. And yeah, mm -hmm. okay, potato chips are like a holiday classic and whatnot. But actually, a half a cup serving of beaten kale chips is only 60 calories. Half a cup? So you can have a whole cup. And it's only yes, you can. There you calories. go. Yeah, absolutely. All right, I love it. And again, serving wise or, or presentation wise, you can put it in a nice bag or in a box like you have right now. Yep and bring it over and I think that's a really unexpected as are all three of these an unexpected treat for the foodie or hostess on your list yes of course excellent thank you so much Michelle yeah. don't go anywhere I'm going to keep you here for a couple more minutes we have to take a short break when we come back we're going to chat more with Michelle on some mindfulness as we enter this holiday craze the next three weeks don't go anywhere welcome back to daytime York region you're taking a look at all of the recipes that Michelle, the nutrition artist, made us. These are great ideas for the foodie on your list if you're attending a holiday party. But let's talk a little bit about holiday parties and mindful eating. Um, tis the season. We've got about three weeks to go and then some. Yep. Um, and a lot of people are having holiday parties or get-togethers and there's going to be a lot of food. Something about the holidays, it means like bring out every form of sugar and fat and food and alcohol and cheer. What do you do when you go to these parties? Well, it's, that's, it's very important when you go to these parties that a lot of people think that, okay, I'm gonna go to the party, I'm gonna eat a lot, so I'm not gonna eat anything all day. Yes. And that is actually a big no-no. Oh, okay. So you actually wanna try to have, eat regularly, have your breakfast, have your lunch. If you wanna have a little bit of snack uh, to avoid overeating before you go to the party, that's not a bad idea too. But the idea is you don't wanna go to your party where you starved yourself all day and you're on a completely empty stomach because that's when we have a tendency to overeat. Oh, okay, good point. Because I know pretty well everyone. <laughs> They're gonna have you know, like a, a heavy Christmas dinner or something, then they don't eat during the day because they wanna save themselves. You wanna save room for all those ravioli in my case. <laughs> That's what we eat on Christmas dinner. And ravioli is okay. You can have ravioli, you know. It but have lunch anyway, so I don't have two bowls of ravioli. Yeah, you know, you can still have it. You know, we're going to be a little bit more mindful about, you know, what we're eating at holiday parties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so let's talk about mixing and mingling um, because there's a lot of conversations happening at the holidays, and you say use that to your advantage. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you're probably going to see people maybe you haven't seen in a while. It'd be a great way to talk to them, have a little bit of conversation. And food is a part of it but it's not it doesn't have to be like the focus of the of the get together because I mean we, we go to holiday parties to see friends and family mm -hmm. right so you know when you go in there you know make sure you have a little bit of conversation you know sometimes too when we think that we are hungry it's actually because we're thirsty so make sure too you are hydrated you have some water before okay water I was gonna say what are we hydrating ourselves with here water <laughs> <laughs> water you know and if you and if you have uh, if you have alcoholic drinks, that's okay. Like, remember, this is the holidays, and, right. and as a nutrition professional, you know we're not we're not food police. We want you to enjoy yourself, you know. But the idea is, um, I don't want you to go in and then feel like really guilty because a lot of people are like, oh, I you know I messed up and I felt really guilty. So right. you know, keep it really positive and enjoy yourself. Enjoy you yourself. So let's talk very briefly about the alcohol because we don't want to be the bah humbugs over here. Um, you can have a, a drink or two. Be mindful that there is sugar in your alcohol. That you're not gonna load yourself up all night. Yeah, and that's another reason why you want to make sure when you go to a party you're not on an empty stomach because, you know, when you drink on an empty stomach, mm -hmm. that tends to, you know, take things not end well. <laughs> Does yeah. not end well. <laughs> and um, also it's better too, it's better for uh, the, it helps to absorb the alcohol a lot better too if you're going to have, um, if you have like food with your alcohol or, you know, beforehand you had your little snack. Okay, and so if there's like a holiday table or a buffet, any strategies so you're not taking your plate and picking every single one of those deviled eggs up there? 
Yes, so when you go and you see all the food on the buffet table, it's a great way to just first look and see what you want to eat first. And that helps, if you've had something to eat before and you're not super hungry, you're less li likely to attack the buffet table, <laughs> right? And you're more likely to be, hmm, okay, do I want to eat that? Is that okay Assess for me today? Assess the situation. Mm -hmm. Assess the situation. Exactly. And then make the right choices. Thank yes. you so much, Michelle. Happy holidays. We have to take a short break. We're back with Vicki Sanderson when we come back.